Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Do that thing to your cell phones, and we'll get started. Nice to see you all. Welcome back to campus for so many of you, alumni, parents, grandparents, friends, partners, etc. We're so excited that you're here at RISD at this wonderful time of year and at this wonderful point in RISD's history when we have so much good news to share for you. We're really excited about this panel today, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, but I think most of you know me. I'm President Summerson, Roseanne Summerson, 17th President of RISD, which is a true honor. And, um, and I have a lot of good news to share with all of you about RISD and how, what RISD is involved in and, and where we're going. It's clear from our enrollment trends that RISD, our form of education, and a RISD education in particular, is more in demand than ever. And we're attracting the best and brightest students from across the globe. We are only accepting at this point 20% of applicants, the highest selectivity in our history, and that places us in a strata of the 100 most selective schools of all types, colleges of all types in the nation which is truly astounding, the only art school anywhere near that achievement. And in the last five years, our applications have increased by 57%, which is huge. And I, that's an interesting number because it sort of correlates to the fact that the majority of colleges this year, of the majority of them, only 58% met their class. So I'm looking at our, our vice president of enrollment who's nodding. We, we are not only meeting our class, but surpassing our selectivity, which is truly a testament to our education and to the legacy that you're all part of. What I'm really proud of in addition to that is that approximately 40% of our incoming class self-identifies as diverse. And overall diversity for the first year undergraduates has increased by 16% over the last five years. And this has been a, a real priority for me as president. I'm really interested in looking at who gets to study at RISD and making sure that the absolutely most talented students have access to a RISD education, regardless of their various demographics or socioeconomics. And I want the most qualified kids here. So we're working very hard to achieve those goals. And in this incoming first year class, 31% of our students, which is 150 students in the class, have been awarded institutional aid at the highest award amount that we've ever awarded, which is about 30,500 per student. Now, it's not enough to meet the need of all of our students, but it's huge progress, and we're going to continue that progress as a priority in our new strategic plan. We've also launched a new initiative, which goes with our social equity and inclusion plan, which is that we're supporting 79 first year students with additional aid, in addition to their financial aid, we're giving them a materials fund every semester that they're here so that they can buy the materials they need to achieve their work. We're giving them access to a one-time global travel experience, class experience of up to $5,000, and we're also paying for them to have a, spon we're sponsoring them to have an internship so that every student has access to the same RISD educational experience. And I'm really proud of the work that our team has put into making that happen. Lastly, I'm really excited about a new program that we just launched this month called the Society of Presidential Fellows. And that will provide full tuition and professional development opportunities to selected graduate students for the duration of their studies. We were finding that many of our top applicants wanted to come to RISD but just couldn't compete with an offer from another institution that was higher than what we could offer. So we're launching this new program based on an extraordinary anonymous gift of $10 million, which will get the program going. So this is fantastic. And that record gift was made with the hope of inspiring others to help build the program, and one alumna immediately stepped up to the challenge. Hillary Blumberg, who was a 92 FAV graduate, has added additional funding to the fund so that we can get it going while we're waiting for the endowment to mature. So we'll be able to start this in the new admissions cycle. Her gift permanently endows a graduate fellowship while providing separate funding to kickstart the broader program. 
And we're already getting incredible buzz from individuals around the country who are hoping to be one of those lucky students. To that extent, we're aggressively building our fundraising operation to better support our students, the ambitions of our strategic plan, the needs of our campus, the, cam the, the physical campus, and to support the college and museum in, in, in every way that we can. We're looking to create a more sustainable financial model that doesn't just continue to put the burdens on the backs of families and students. So we're doing research and implementation of a lot of alternative revenue streams, and we're making great progress on our fundraising. This past year, we had a record fundraising year for the college and museum with a total of over $30 million raised. And we think we might surpass it this year. So we're very excited about this progress. Increased fundraising will also help us to continue to attract the best and brightest students, but also the faculty, which are so key to RISD's success. And a lot of our strategic plan is about supporting faculty in ways that they can do their research, do their publications, do their exhibitions, so that they continue to thrive here at RISD um, professionally, as well as through the classroom. We've hired 10 new faculty this year, and at the end of this uh, search cycle, we will have hired, in the time of my presidency alone, 68 new faculty out of 180 faculty. So that's an enormous, it's about 40% of our faculty. And they're bringing in new forms of practice, new ideas, and incredible diversity to our campus. The, um, the, to support that, that, that commitment to teaching, we've established something called the Teaching and Learning Lab, which is part of our Social Equity and Inclusion Center. And it will provide peer-to-peer -peer opportunities for our faculty to take a class with another faculty member for a full semester to look at, at, uh, at advancing their own curricula to be, include inclusive teaching pedagogy. So new resources, new canons, new critics, new, um, new role models for our students so that we're really putting our commitment to inclusivity directly into the classroom. And it's also going to be looking at how to develop cutting edge pedagogy for the 21st century. So we're very, very excited about this investment in our faculty, which will have an immediate impact on our students. Just as our faculty are growing in their esteem, so too is the RISD Museum, which continues to gain recognition as a preeminent art museum locally and around the world. Last year, we had a record-breaking attendance of over 123,000 uh, visitors, which if you think about the size of Rhode Island, is very significant. We also had 25% of the public school children in Rhode Island attend the RISD Museum. And when we learned that they were not able to attend because the transportation budgets were cut in their schools, we got a donor to help us to supply transportation. So we now pick the kids up, take them back, and give each kid a ticket so that they can bring their families back to the museum. Thank you. We've also created a, a program for ro refugees in Rhode Island, a welcome program, and giving them all free membership to the RISD Museum. This fall, um, there is a terrific exhibition. Three artists are, of nine are already in place in the museum, but it's the 50th anniversary of Andy Warhol's Ra Raid the Icebox One, which happened at the RISD Museum. It was the first exhibition where the th genre was about an artist curating from the collection, and Andy Warhol did that here. And 50 years later, we're doing Raid the Icebox now by inviting a stellar list of contemporary artists to each do an intervention in the museum. And as I said, three of them are there now if you come back, and we hope you do. In May, all nine will be up, and they're amazing, amazingly ambitious and provocative. There's also a, a tremendous show called Gorham Silver, Designing Brilliance, which you should see, which talks a lot about Rhode Island's connection to innovation, aesthetics, industry, and beauty, uh, material ex excellence. So please take the time to see those. We're also prioritizing the continued implementation of the Campus Master Plan, which calls for the renewal and expansion, not so much expansion, mostly renewal, of two-thirds of our campus. And instead of just thinking about that as deferred maintenance, we're thinking about that through a programmatic lens. So how do we make living and learning spaces for our students and faculty and staff 
that really reflect what, where we think art and design education is going in the 21st century. We just completed North Hall. There's a ribbon cutting today with biodegradable confetti, which I urge you all to come to. And um, it is our first new residence hall in 30 years, and it will house 148 students, work rooms, bike rooms, a kitchen, and um, that will take place 11 to 12, and you can tour the residence, which is beautiful, uh, absolutely beautiful. And it, there are incredible statistics, which if you attend, you'll hear about the energy savings in that building from a standard um, constructed building. So we're very proud that in our strategic plan, there's a big emphasis on sustainabi sustainability, and we're living that into our campus now, as well as into our curriculum. The next phase of the campus master plan will focus on academic buildings and equipment as part of our effort to ensure that all of our academic programs are on the forefront of education in the arts and design and to create unspecified spaces for speculative inquiry, for things that we don't even know the students and the faculty are going to do um, in, in the classrooms to really create new knowledge. And if you have a chance next to the bookstore, one of the first experiments just opened, it's the Color Lab, and it's a really open-ended interdisciplinary lab looking at themes that just have in common color. So please stop by there if you have a chance. Aside from this record-breaking year, we've engaged in a process to reimagine RISD in the future, and you're, you've heard me refer to our strategic plan. It's called RISD Next 2020 to 2027. We kind of like the 2020 because it's about vision, and the 2027 because it's our 150th year. So we're tr we went through a lot of thought exercises and decided where do we want to see RISD in, if you were coming back 150 years after its founding, what would you want to see and let's get us there. The um, kind of principles of the plan are about the empowerment that we feel here about our unique gifts of questioning, of making, and communicating. And we feel that the RISD community is particularly positioned to address urban global challenges in ways that only the creativity and imaginations that exist at RISD can think about these major problems. And we're looking not, so there are three pillars, sustainability, social justice, and the development of new knowledge. What I'm most excited about, although I care passionately about all three pillars, is that we're looking at the interstitial spaces between those topics to think about how sustainability and social justice are inexorably linked, how we create new knowledge that helps us to navigate these really complex times. Part of the plan is a, a commitment to expanding our research capacity and our output and how our research is shared out in the world. And also, as I said, increasing access for a really talented range of students who perhaps aren't able to attend RISD at the moment. As president, I'm super proud of the values that we articulated in this plan. They were developed by the whole community, the full support of the faculty, the full support of the board. And so I feel like we're on track together to make big things happen for RISD's future. But we really want all of you to be part of that too. It really requires the extended community. So there are strategic plans posted around the campus, but also go online and read the plan. Give us your ideas. Let us know what you're interested in helping, and please be part of this building of RISD's future. As alumni, parents, friends, you are our greatest ambassadors, and you represent RISD's value all over the world in 93 countries at the moment. And you're also very important to our institutional planning because a plan is only as good as its implementation. And so every year we'll be reflecting, did we get it right? Is there something we should tweak? And your input will be invaluable to that. Last year, I stood on this stage and talked about our alumni survey, which was the first one in 12 years, and some of the actions that RISD planned directly in response to what alumni told us they wanted to, for RISD. And I'm pleased to share with you some of the progress we've made. We've invested resources, significant resources, in supporting and building our global alumni clubs, now numbering 26 clubs across the globe, which is super exciting. And I just came back last week from Istanbul, Istanbul and London. In Istanbul, we had 75 people at our event. And in um, 
and in London, 58. So it's, you know, it's starting to work. It's amazing. We're also launching a series of lifelong learning programs with webinars and workshops in regional clubs. So you, and I'll talk to you about how you access these in a minute, but there's lots of information and support for alumni out there who are needing some guidance or needing to tweak how they're approaching their practice. We've also begun to build a network of affinity groups that organize around shared interests with four to date, and these are shared interests. So an example is we have an alumni club based on film and television run by two award-winning producers who are RISD alums, and they're connecting with RISD people interested in, tech, in um, tech, television and, and film across the globe. Similarly, we have a RISD tech group. We have groups that we're forming around certain themes, and we're hoping to get about 30 affinity groups up and running in the next few years. This weekend, we've launched an alumni website, a brand new alumni website, risd.alumni.edu. And you have to go in there. It's amazing. You have to post your stories. You have to find your friends. You have to see what learning opportunities are avail available to you. It's an incredible project and a great tool for all of you to share. And um, we were very excited last night to celebrate three alumni in an awards ceremony. And I hope that as you um, participate, you can also nominate alums for those awards. We open it up to alumni nominations for next year. Please be part of that. You may find your name in the award category. You never know. And we're also developing through the website and through some other software that we're integrating with the website, a new mentorship program where we'll be asking our alums to mentor each other to get mentorship and to mentor our students. So if that's something of interest to you, please check into the website and participate in that. We look at that as mentorship at all stages of careers. I think we're all lifelong learners and we can always benefit from the knowledge and experiences of others. This is the 125th anniversary of the RISD Alumni Association, which started, of course, after the founding of the school. They needed some alumni first. And um, I'm proud to say that we are honoring that anniversary by supporting our alumni like never before. We're really excited about reconnecting with all of you. The alumni told us that they're really concerned with seeing RISD involved in pressing issues of our times, and those are clearly in our strategic plan. And um, we also are, I want to sort of bring that into today's program.